As the Edo State Governorship election draws nearer, so are the safety concerns heightening day by day. Amnesty International has asked the federal government to prevent bloodshed in the upcoming election in Edo State and by fulfilling its obligation to promote, protect and respect human rights amidst disturbing signs of violence in the state. The human rights organization said it had received reports of violence by the political class and the use of young people to perpetrate these disgraceful acts. Joining us to discuss this is Osai Ojigo, the country director of Amnesty International, and Omoladu Agbaje, a lawmaker via Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm going to start with, um, um, of course, um, Amnesty International now. Let's first of all talk about the desperation for political positions in Nigeria. Um, why is it such a do-or-die affair? Um, I think it's quite a sad situation that we have where uh, people use violence as a tool to dominate, to intimidate, and also to oppress others. And it shows a high tolerance for this sort of practices. So the, if you have the power of might, then you can get away with um, murder. And that is why it's really important that the security agents and the government takes steps to prevent people from using violence in order to torment and intimidate and harass others. We need to have a violence-free society. Nobody should be able to abuse their position or their authorities um, unfairly to disadvantage any other person. Okay, I'm going to also bring up, you know, something related to what you just mentioned, you know, later in this conversation. But um, I would also like um, um, Mr. Agbaje to quickly respond to that. Um, I'm sure that you have followed elections across the country for the longest time. Um, you've seen violence, you know, occur um, in every part of the country, I believe. Why do you think Nigerian politicians are so or get so desperate um, that it becomes a do or die affair? If you can hear me, uh, Mr. Agbaje. Okay, we seem to have lost him there. I hope that we can uh, reconnect with him. Um, but I'm going to go back to Osai Ojigbo now. Um, I'm, I'm going further with you know what you just mentioned. Um, it's something I thought we we're going to talk about later, but I'll bring it up now. Um, do you think the Nigerian government has failed in the past to um, protect citizens with, when it comes to electro, um, election period? Do you think the Nigerian government has also failed in the past to put its foot down with regards to electoral violence and incitive statements that have led to the loss of lives and property? I think if you look at the pattern of elections in Nigeria, um, it seems that violence is um, anemic to the process. Um, we, we don't need to go far. The last general elections had a lot of inconclusive uh, processes linked to violence. And so the fact that we had to have several other um, elections held at different times and different processes because of the violence that broke out in certain areas just speaks to the fact that this is one issue that we need to address strongly. The fact that people have lost their lives as a result of clashes connected to elections, the intimidation of journalists, the arrest of journalists, um, it's a sad reality that when we think of elections, automatically we start having apprehension about what is going to happen to people's lives. And then sadly, there seems to be uh, an absence of an independent and impartial security overview in terms of protection of lives and properties on both sides. Because security agents have a duty first and foremost to maintain law and order and to prevent the violence from happening in the first place. But instead, what we're experiencing is in some areas, it appears that there are no security um, agents, uh, their presence are not felt. And so violence goes unabated for hours, days before there's a response. We are saying that the excuse that there were so many hotspots during the general elections prevented the security agents from effectively policing and managing outbreaks of violence should not be the case in the upcoming elections in Edo State and on those states subsequently. People need to hold our state representatives and the federal government to account because this is just one state. 
So it means that you can deploy all the necessary facilities in order to ensure that it's peaceful, so in order to ensure that the transparency and the integrity of the process is not questioned. And violence actually prevents this from happening. Uh, also, they need to moderate in, in greater respect the way and manner in which the ongoing um, campaigns are going. Because if people know that they are not dealt with, people are not investigated for any violence or threats that are occurring now, you can be rest assured on election day, they will be more bold to create even more um, anarchy. So they need to nip it in the bud now so that this can be an example of elections we want to see going forward from, um, from, from this point. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now um, bring back uh, Honorable Lagbaje. Um, welcome, and I, I want you to speak on do-or-die elections um, in Nigeria, um, following campaigns, uh, the whole electoral process until, of course, even eventually uh, post-election. Um, why do you think Nigerian politicians get so desperate? Thank you very much. Uh, as we all know, the do or do at, do or die attitude of politicians to elections in Nigeria is stemming from sheer greed. The 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 purpose of coming into politics, as we all know, people will always say, is to serve. And if that is true, then one would expect that when you come out to say you want to serve the people, it should not be a do or die matter. But because we only pay lip service to that uh, position when we say we want to serve, rather, we are preoccupied by the loss of power and uh, other things that follow. This is the reason people become too desperate. And it's really, really unfortunate. Uh, I think that uh, it is high time we review constitutional political positions, powers appropriated to the various offices, and uh, we, should, we put them down such that when you are there to serve, you are answering. Again, uh, I think the law enforcement agent have a very great role to play in this regard. In a situation where they get easily compromised, then uh, it's, it's first doom. And that is what we are witnessing today. With regards to uh, those state elections, uh, we have seen pockets of violence in the uh, election area. And uh, it is uh, very unfortunate. As, me as media organizations, you all have a responsibility to do investigation. And if you check properly, you see that the violent activities are coming from a particular direction. And uh, the, 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 media, the, the media is not talking. Maybe, let me give it to you. Let me give it to you that you like to carry balanced information, but please do investigation and let us, let us apportion blame. When you apportion blame, when you when you expose people who perpetrate violence, then it, uh, it is a, it's a way of also solving the problem. But when everybody keeps quiet, the law enforcement agents are not doing their job as as constitutionally mandated. Then the, those involved in violent activities, they find incentive in carrying out violent activities. All right, um, back to um, Osayo Jigo now. I, I want your thoughts on. INEC being given prosecutorial powers to sanction political parties or aspirants that create um, chaos or maybe even incite violence. Um, how do you think this should play out? And do you think that is even possible um, in our you know, Nigerian electoral process? I think it's very important for INEC to maintain its independence as an umpire and definitely not to enter into the arena um, in terms of um, deciding who does what. But it's also important to realize that INEC also has powers in terms of ensuring that the political process uh, goes smoothly and is transparent and that any electoral offenses are dealt with appropriately. 
I think there's a reason why we have division of powers and why it's important that um, for cases involving any sort of crime, it is clear you have the prosecuting harm, you face the judicial panel, and then uh, once it is decided, then enforcement takes place. And so that cycle needs to be preserved, whatever um, decisions or whatever format is, is used. But we do also need um, INEC to be quite clear and vocal when he sees things within the process or when he sees that the process is being um, interfered with and they should be able to share that information publicly so that everyone, the public is aware and it also deter others from abusing the system for their, for their ends. And if I may quickly just add that it's the responsibility of the federal government to ensure that all parties involved in these particular elections maintain decorum and that they do not use their positions to abuse human rights. I think we should put the obligation where it squarely belongs and we should not be confused by that at all. Furthermore, if the federal government takes a stance that there's zero tolerance for violence in any election in Nigeria, you would see everybody else would toe the line. There shouldn't be any form of uh, uh, distancing from this issue. It's about human beings, it's about Nigerians' lives, and it's about securing a free and safe um, assessment of the people's choice in this case. All right, I'm gonna just uh, wrap up with um, Honorable Agbaje. Now, I want your quick um, word to the aspirants in Edo State. Um, if you, it was left to you to advise, um, what would you be saying to the both of them? Um, and of course, um, every other person who was involved in the elections, including the former, you know, Edo State Governor Adam Sushomole, um, what would you be advising at a time like this? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, like I said earlier, the pockets of violence that have been recorded in Edo State, I'm sure we all know where it is coming from. First and foremost, I will, I will, I will appeal that the security agencies be encouraged to up their game. Let them swing into action. Those who have perpetrated violence are known. It's not as they are not they are not they are not ghosts from any they are not spirits. They live within us. Some even enjoy cover. Let them let the security agents summon the courage. Bring them to book. And then when the law runs its course, people will be discouraged. For the candidates of uh, the, the parties, uh, let me quickly inform you, I belong to a particular party. So I may not be able to give a balanced uh, uh, opinion. Would you say that the party that on, you belong on, to has on what, been... On what, on what, on what's going on? Yeah, well, I'm just going to ask, would you say that the party that you belong to has been um, guilty yes. in one way or the other of also inciting yes, violence? Yes, the APC, which I belong to, Okay. has been at the receiving end of the violent activities. And uh, I want to appeal to the governor and uh, his uh, new party, PDP, to take it easy. Let's have a peaceful election. Let the will of people uh, be respected. And uh, if we have a peaceful election, I don't think it's a minus to anybody. But if we, if we go by the way uh, things are going, it will spell doom. Uh, we do not have to perpetrate violence All on right. the same people we want to serve. So I plead with them, let them take it easy. Election should not be uh, everything about life. It's about contest. So uh, like, like I said, uh, let the police and the other security agencies do their, do their job. For All Nobody right. has been persecuted. Thank people you. are not even being arrested. So we need to do things right. Thank you so much, um, Osai Ojigo, Country Director, Amnesty International, and Honorable Omoladun Agbaje uh, for sharing with us. Uh, truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. The most reliable method yet invented to ensure that governments provide people with social and economic necessities is called politics. 
This is from The Economist, uh, London, in March uh, 24, 2007. The average Nigerian politician takes politics as his sole and only source of income, a well through which they continue to amass more and more and more wealth than they can ever finish spending. What is it with the Nigerian politician's attachment to wealth? Why isn't our politics about service? The average Nigerian politician has no job outside politics, and this has come from years of continued stealing from the federal and state that has made it extremely difficult for them to have successful businesses or careers outside politics. They all know that the system has been too badly beaten for them to exist and thrive as businessmen or career people. And so politics and power con uh, continues to be like a drug, more addictive than can ever be explained. What else can make that seat so attractive that it becomes win or die to some politicians? It's obviously not because of their passion to serve or because of their love for the people. Question. What makes a person fight so hard, even to the extent of leading to the loss of lives, for a political position where he ends up making no significant improvement in the, in the lives of people? Until we fix our judiciary, our electoral system, and create strong oversight institutions, we would continue to move in circles without being able to fix this demon that has plagued us. And that's all for today. Plus Politics returns tomorrow at 7 p.m. with even more interesting conversations. Remember to stay safe. Have a good evening.